Hi everyone, today we're going to study the definite integral. Let us define the definite integral. If f of x is a function defined on an interval, this is a closed interval from a to b. The definite integral of f from a to b is denoted as the integral from a to b of f of x dx. And it gives the area bounded by the curve y equals f of x, the lines x equals a, x equals b, and the x-axis. There is a note here. Although the notation for indefinite integrals may look similar to the notation for a definite integral, they are not the same. A definite integral is a number that denotes an area, while an indefinite integral is a family of functions. For illustration, we have this figure. The area A, it's here, the shaded region, is bounded by the curve y equals f of x. This is the curve. The lines x equals A and the x equals B and the x-axis. Again, the notation of definite integral is this. The integral from a to b of f of x dx. In here, we see two small numbers in the integral sign. We call this the limits of integration, the a and the b. Specifically, the a is what we call the lower limit, while the b is the upper limit. Now let us study properties of definite integral. This is the first property, the integral from a to b of f of x dx is equal to the integral from a to b of f of t dt. We may write also that this is equal to the integral from a to b of f of u du. Property number two, the integral from a to a of f of x dx equals zero. We can see here that the limits of integration are the same. Property number three, the integral from a to b of f of x dx is equal to the negative of the integral from b to a of f of x dx. Property number four, the integral from a to b of f of x dx equals the integral from a to c f of x dx plus the integral from c to b f of x dx. Here, c is any number between a and b. Let's see now the fundamental theorem of calculus. We have this fundamental theorem of calculus part 1. And it goes like this. If f of x is continuous over an interval or closed interval from A to B, and the function capital F of X is defined by capital F of X equals the integral from A to X of F of X dx. Then, 
capital F prime of X equals small f of X over the closed interval from A to B. This theorem establishes relationship between integration and differentiation. And it guarantees that any integrable function has an antiderivative. Specifically, it guarantees that any continuous function has an antiderivative. This is now Fundamental Theorem of Calculus Part 2. This is also known as the Evaluation Theorem. And it goes like this. If f of x is continuous over an interval, or we say closed interval from A to B, and the function capital F of x is any antiderivative of f of x, then the integral from A to B of f of x dx equals the capital F of x from A to B. This is the notation that is commonly used in some of the calculus books. And we can still evaluate this into capital F of B minus capital F of A. This theorem states that if we can find an antiderivative for the integrand, then we can evaluate the definite integral by evaluating the antiderivative at the endpoints of the interval and subtracting. Today, we are going to evaluate definite integrals. In evaluating definite integrals, say the integral from A to B of f of x dx, step 1 is evaluate this as indefinite integral, that is the integral of f of x dx. And then the resulting is a capital F of X. This time, we will not add the C. Step 2 is, by fundamental theorem of calculus part 2, we are going to evaluate this function capital F of X with respect to the limits of integration. So we have F of B minus F of A. Let's see this example 1. Evaluate the integral from negative 2 to positive 2 of the function t squared minus 4 dt. For our solution, let us evaluate as indefinite integral. So we have now the integral of t squared minus 4 dt, and we have the integral of t squared to be t cubed over 3 minus the integral of 4 is 4t. Now the step 2, we will evaluate the resulting function using the limits of integration. So we use the negative 2 and 2. Most of the books of calculus you will see this notation. And this is the same with f of 2 minus f of negative 2. So the f of 2 is now 2 cubed over 3 minus 4 times 2. Then minus this f of negative 2 is the cube of negative 2 over 3 minus 4 times negative 2. We simplify the 2 cube to be 8 
then over 3 minus 4 times 2 is 8 minus now the cube of negative 2 is negative 8 over 3 then negative 4 times negative 2 is positive 8 let us now remove the grouping symbol and considering the second group is preceded by a negative sign we are going to change the sign of the terms of the second group so we have now this 8 over 3 minus 8 plus 8 over 3 minus 8 we will now simplify these numbers into negative 32 over 3 this is our final answer example 2 let us evaluate the integral from 1 to 9 of the function x minus 1 all over the square root of x dx for our solution let us rewrite the integral and show that this radical sign here is a fractional exponent so we have now the integral from 1 to 9 of the function x minus 1 all over x raised to the fraction 1 half dx and from here let us distribute the denominator to each of the term of numerator so we have this x over x raised to 1 half minus 1 over x raised to 1 half and let us simplify each of the fractions so we have this x raised to 1 half minus x raised to negative 1 half and from here let us do step 1 and that is to evaluate as indefinite integral using the power rule this x raised to 1 half is now equal to x raised to 1 half plus 1 all over the denominator 1 half plus 1 minus this x raised to negative 1 half has the integral x raised to negative 1 half plus 1 all over the denominator negative 1 half plus 1 simplifying further this 1 half plus 1 is 3 halves so we write here x raised to 3 over 2 all over 3 over 2 minus the x raised to this negative 1 half plus 1 is positive 1 half so we have here 1 half as the exponent all over the same 1 half as denominator let us simplify this further by flipping the denominator and making this denominator 2 to be coefficient of x in the numerator so we have 2x raised to 3 over 2 all over 3 then for this minus 2x raised to 1 half and from here we will go to step 2 that is the f of b minus the f of a and we say that in some books you will see this notation a vertical line and we put the limits of integration the 1 and the 9 so we have now 2 times 9 raised to 3 over 2 all over 3 minus 2 times 9 raised to 1 half then minus the f of a we have 2 times 1 raised to 3 over 2 all over 3 minus 2 times 1 raised to 1 half simplifying further this 9 raised to 3 over 2 can be simplified into 27 this 9 raised to 1 half is 3 this one here raised to 3 over 2 is simply 1 and 1 raised to 1 over 2 is 1 you see here the 27 and 3 can be simplified into 9 and 9 
times 2 is now 18. Then minus 2 times 3 is 6. Then minus the second group now is 2 times 1 is 2 over 3. Minus 2 times 1 is 2. From here, let us remove the grouping symbol. So we have now 18 minus 6 minus 2 over 3 plus 2. So the final answer here is 40 over 3. Example 3. Evaluate the integral from 0 to pi over 2. Cosine theta d theta. For our solution, let us evaluate as indefinite integral. So the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of cosine theta d theta is equal to sine theta. Then the step 2, capital F of B minus capital F of A. So the notation is here from 0 to pi over 2. So the F of B is now sine of pi over 2, then minus the F of A, that is sine 0. Let us evaluate the values of the corresponding signs here. But take note, in our calculator, it must be in radian mode. So the sine of pi over 2 is 1, then minus the sine of 0 is 0. 1 minus 0 is simply 1. This is the final answer. I hope you learned something from this video. See you again next time.